Okay, this is the uh, plasma jig that I made. Uh, the backstory for the plasma jig is the road wheels um, need a two and one quarter inch hole cut in the center, and the radius is five and three eighths. Unfortunately, my drill press from the back column to the center of the spindle is only five inches, so I couldn't use my drill press to drill these holes with a hole saw. Not only that, but my drill press wouldn't go down to the required, it's like 150 RPM for that big of a hole saw. So, initially I thought about seeking professional help, uh, no pun intended, uh, to have them done. However, even a low ball figure was 100 bucks to do 48 because I had all 36 road wheels and I had the, uh, uh, the return rollers, the, the return rollers for the track, all those had to have two and quarter inch holes cut. So, initially I wanted to use my original circle cutter, um, which was used to cut these outside radiuses. However, it has a minim minimum radius of about one and three quarters, uh, so it could not do a two and quarter inch. So, I made this, and initially I was going to make it a little bit nicer and use more expensive steel, but then I decided, no, I'm just going to do it all out of the scrap pile. And if everything worked out, I'd improve a few things, you know, make it a little better. Like, for instance, this right here, these tabs that I just made, uh, makeshift rail, I'll take and you actually use round bar and uh, pipe to make a nice rail. Because this doesn't adjust real easy. You know, it, it doesn't slide nice and smooth if you're trying to adjust just a little bit um, one way or the other. So that, that, that's kind of temperamental. Also, I don't know if you can see it, this slit right here, I just made a cut right here for where the, the head is, then to help with the, the dross, the slag accumulation. Um, however, um, after doing it, I realized it needs to be wider. Um, and what happens is underneath, uh, you just get piles of slag that just build up underneath it. And because the, it's, it's, it's narrow, it clings to the bottom and comes up from underneath it. Um, I went ahead and I just kind of wiggled the head around where I'm working at this radius and that's helped a lot so eventually I'm just going to go through and I'm going to widen this and add a little bit more support so the heat doesn't warp it quite so big. So I've got a, a working surface here and then I've got, uh, already have my center guides drilled. Eventually I'm going to, uh, this is one eighth um, and I'm going to change that out to one quarter uh, and then I'm going to add a little, I'll, I'll put a weld another piece underneath and then re-drill the hole so there has actually more surface area for the pin to contact with to keep it more perpendicular. Uh, with it just being 1 8 versus 1 8 that has some play in it. Um, so that being said, all I have to do is pin it. Gotta find the hole. And then spin it. cuts a pretty clean hole and actually these holes, these inside holes are actually cleaner than the outside holes that I cut with this jig. These have actually, I've gone through and turned them down on the, the sander, uh, but this actually produces a cleaner hole and you can only, you can see the marks where it started uh, and then where I paused when I was turning, uh, but it still produces actually a cleaner hole than that does. Obviously I couldn't do the, you know, these were cut out from a full sheet of 1 8 inch plate. So obviously I couldn't spin a 1 8 inch plate around, I'd, you know, um, this wouldn't work in that setup. But if, you had, if I had just a, a chunk, an odd sized chunk that I wanted to turn into a circle, this would actually clean, but produce a cleaner hole. Uh, but eventually I am going to go through, I am going to add the rails and make the improvements. Um, but it probably won't be anytime soon simply because, well, I've cut my 48 holes and probably won't have a need for it for a while. And that's my jig. <laughs>